Hey What's gang, up? how we doing? How we doing? Episode 7, live at 5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, Don't wait, for wait our, a little bit. Wait for them followers to but, come uh, up. For all you out there in Facebook land, I've been crushing uh, Westworld. It's a new HBO series. The, uh, the premise is it's like this amusement park where you can go and uh, it's all like Wild Wild West themed, but they have like these cyborgs that are like, you can't tell them apart from regular humans and you can like interact with them any way you want. You can like kill anybody that you want. And I might have to watch this. Dude, it's so good, man. The plot is awesome, man. They're like fighting with like everything that like that, uh, the common theme with like androids and like things like that is the, uh, they're dealing with like cognitive thought and like, you know whether they're like people and stuff and it's it's really 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 cool i definitely recommend checking it out i mean i'm watching game of thrones well yeah definitely finish game of thrones first but uh yeah westworld if you guys aren't watching it or you're looking for something to watch man it's it's really cool something to go about yeah so uh what you got for me matty ice uh first uh it's one of the ps2 games that i I've been looking for because I have the second one and I also have it on my PS4 because it's backwards compatible or something like that but uh, I have Manhunt nice and I like I said I never played the first one but the second one's pretty messed up yeah it's a uh, very very <laughs> twisted and horrific game and yeah it's it's kind of, what is it like does it doesn't it play like Grand Theft Auto by City yes I mean, Similarly, it's a Rockstar. Yeah, but, it's a Rockstar game, so it has so, that like GTA Red Dead feel to it. But, but the storyline is just very twisted, very psychopathic, and uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I saw commercials whenever I was little, and they always scared definitely me. Definitely not for the faint of heart. There's a lot of like gruesome murders and things. Yeah, and they, uh, I don't know if they, this will show up, but like that's pretty messed up. Kind of reminds me of like The Purge. Or like out, saw, or like saw, like uh, coming out of you like twisted Ooh. man. Uh, yeah, I think in the the first ten minutes of that game, you strangled somebody to death yeah. with a uh, a plastic bag. It was really cool. Oh, dude, look at all the uh, the Halloween emojis. I didn't That's so cool. I didn't even see it. <laughs> hey, Tom, what's oh, happening, that man? Is nice. Yeah, yeah what up, Tyler. That game is brutal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, very it's... brutal. Yeah. This is a brutal blood sport. Oh. But yeah, there's a second right. one as well. They put it on Wii, give you those motion controls, make you feel like you're really, <laughs> you're actually killing really people. slaughtering people. <laughs> Ooh, it's spooky. Oh, dude, Frankenstein. Frankenstein? That's cool. What, what is, is that? that? I think it's Maybe a vampire. zombie or a vampire zombie? or something. Tommy. Well, what whatever. Tommy? Uh, next on my list <laughs> is uh, is a famed RPG. Uh, it's one of the greatest of all time. I got some slack in one of our first episodes for neglecting to mention it. We got a copy trade, and it's a little beat, but it's uh, Chrono Trigger uh, by Square. It was a really, really, really critically acclaimed RPG, one of the best out there. Um, it didn't have, like, your typical, like, cut scene when you went in to fight enemies. Like, it would, uh, it, you had all these, like, combo attacks and stuff. It was really cool, really awesome story, really, uh, interesting and unique characters in this game uh played with like the time travel aspect and stuff um but if you are an rpg fan or super nintendo collector or whatever okay. this has got to be in there i was gonna say david's been looking for a copy of that oh ah, yeah. david what's david, up stop in yeah stop Pick in. this up so I, I had a question about it and i've been thinking about it why is it so like overpriced? Not overpriced, but like expensive on um, the Super Nintendo. A lot of those RPGs just kind of skyrocketed in value when the retro gaming craze kind of took on. It's okay. uh, it was a little bit harder to find, uh, maybe due to like limited copy productions and stuff like that. But it just okay. seems like all those Square and Enix type RPGs just kind of seem to to skyrocket in price. It was kind of like a, a weird thing, like that's why they call Final Fantasy Final Fantasy was that like Americans weren't into RPGs and stuff like that. So it was it was a tough market over here. Gotcha. And um and just to like never talk about Right and Square dumped the last of their money into this game so they called it their Final Fantasy and it became a hit <laughs> for sure. And uh it, yeah, really cool um story there but uh 
Yeah, I, I don't know why these RPGs skyrocket in value. I mean, they're awesome. Everybody wants them. Everybody yeah. likes them. They're they're timeless. Is that why like Harvest Moon and all of them kind of Harvest, Harvest Moon? I think is more so just because of low production rate. Mm. Um, it's like a real niche market. Not many people are out there and just like see a farming simulator and they're just like, yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have that. Farming simulator. But, uh, yeah, super addictive game, Harvest Moon, if you've never played it. Pick it up. Hey, Mikey Schneider, what's happening, bud? <laughs> what is good? Um, the next kind of, well, I have two games, actually. Um, this, because it's Halloween, so I've said... I, I noticed a little theme in your yeah, stack a little there. A little bit of a theme. Just, just a little bit. Um, they're both NES titles, and David, I don't know if you're watching, but this is one for you. It's a Castlevania and Simon's Quest. Castlevania 2. Castlevania 2. And then, of course, the Castlevania 3. Three, but I don't think we had a copy of that one over yeah, there. Yeah, Dracula's Curse. No, it's a little bit tougher to come by. Yeah. Um, I remember playing Castlevania. Like, Dave and I, whenever we first collected, like, NES games, I wanted Castlevania so bad just because it was, like, we watched uh, the Angry Video Game Nerd or whatever, sure. and we talked about Simon's Quest, which was kind of crazy. But, uh... And I guess the game sucks. Apparently, I mean, compared to him, compared to the other Castlevanias, Castlevania Two does take some slack, you know, and, and it just. I mean, I, I don't know why it, it was a decent. I was game. gonna say I, I liked it. I remember um, Dave and I went over to like Boxy Video, which is like a rental place in my town, and the one day I got it from eBay, and I was like, "Oh, we got to play this." <laughs> and we got a place, and he was like, "Oh, but I want to go to Boxy Video, like rent this game. I'm like, you go ahead. I'm playing this for like three hours straight. Like I played it nonstop. Nice <laughs> for that one. And then Castlevania One is just one of my personal favorites on yeah, the NES. Fantastic just game. It's so good. Uh, so good. We actually have a. Do we still have a copy of it? Castlevania Four. Yeah, we do have a copy of Symphony of the Night, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Um, which brings us to the next point is that, like, as again, guys, we want to remind you that everything that we're showing you here today is available for sale. You guys can come pick it up after the video or during the video. Maybe jump on live Facebook and uh, get some get popularity. Get a shout out, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, next on my list is a game we used to play in my mom's basement all the time. Now, that sounds so cliche. A bunch of nerds <laughs> hanging out in their mom's basement or whatever, but hey, you know. who cares? Uh, we had a lot of fun with it. A bunch of my bros, like Pat and Eddie and Packard, would always play them. And that is the X-Men Legends series. Um, I'm playing through Marvel Ultimate Alliance Remake on my Xbox One now. Oh, they remade it? Yeah, they remade uh, Ultimate Alliance 1 and 2, both on Xbox One and PS4. Super yeah. dope. Um, but yeah, this plays like uh, your, your Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance or your Champions of Norath. It was like a four-player top-down, like multiplayer beat-em-up game. Um, I'm a big X-Men fan, so I, these were a must-have. Uh, really cool storylines. It's got all the, the mainstream uh, X-Men game or X-Men characters, rather. And uh, the second one, you actually get to play some of the people from the Brotherhood of Mutants, like Magneto and Toad and things like that. Uh, like just really cool like custom combo moves and just great X-Men lore. If you guys are looking for some local co-op, some really great games on the PS2 as well, X-Men Legends, definitely check them out. See, I was never a superhero person. I still am not. Like I, I, could, I, I go back and forth on it, you okay. know what I mean? But yeah. the X-Men, I just I always like the X-Men. So like, who is on the X-Men and who... Like is it, like Professor is, X. Is, I was or, gonna say this yeah. is gonna sound stupid, but is like Superman part of X Men? No, that's that's DC Comics, DC, man. That's, uh, that's, 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 that's a whole different thing. It's like thing. Batman and the okay. Justice League. He was a member of the Justice League. Okay, see, this is this is that's my level on superheroes because I don't know anything about them. I just watched a movie. Just wow. <laughs> I know. I'm awful. Just wow, <laughs> bud. I don't I don't know if I can save you from that one, I, dude. I, I can't save myself. That's, I gotta, uh, that's, but that's I do great. like playing the games and watching the movies. Yeah, I mean, no, I, for I sure, made... dude. You're like, you know, a comic weeboo. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe I will. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> a couple's fired you, bud. Why? Because you don't know who Superman's on. I'm, uh, well... But, yeah. Oh God! Let's show these people some deals. Maybe we can forget about this with these. I don't know about that. I don't. I don't know either. But hey, it's the last weekend to grab some of these spooky specials. Uh, rock that PS4 for two forty nine. Get a free game. 
or the Wii system for 49 with a free game or the, the 360 250 gig slim with a free game. Now that free game is under $20 will make it free, but uh, if the game that you had your eye on, like we've said previously, is more than $20, we'll take $20 off it. You want a $50 game, we'll make it 30. Great time to upgrade for these new consoles. A lot of great games coming out this holiday season. Uh, good time to, uh, to, to you know beef up your game systems. Uh, next we got your text loyalty as usual uh, text the word galore to 51660 we'll give you five bucks off your next ten dollar or more purchase uh, and it's a great way to stay in the loop we, we send you maybe you know a text message a week if that with our flyer deals we run some contests through there before you know just keep you in the, in the loop of what's going on here and you know great way for some of you out of towners to stay in the loop as well uh, and then last but not least, our social media is as usual. Great way to keep in touch with us, see what's happening, see what's popping. You got the Snapchat, Cart or Carts Galore, Twitter, at Carts Galore, and Instagram, cartridges.galore. So I'll give them to you once more. Let's check out these deals again. Come grab some systems. And we'll get back to it here. Um, oh, hi. Oh, hey, hey guys. Uh, Leo, what's happening? It's been a while, my man. When are you going to bring me some goodies? Uh, <laughs> I don't usually do uh, newer stuff, but I'm playing this game now. It's fantastic. came out a couple weeks ago. Uh, it's the new Paper Mario on Wii U, Color Splash. Uh, really great gameplay. Um, I, I would still that. say that it's not as good as like the original Paper Mario or, or Thousand Year Door. Yeah. Uh, okay. um, it seems as though the Mario and Luigi series has kind of taken over that RPG role play element. But uh, this is, it, it's got a great groovy jazzy soundtrack. Awesome graphics, man. The, the thing is, is that like Bowser and his uh, cronies come and they are sucking all the color out of the world. That's and, kind of... uh, depressing <laughs> yeah no it's, it's really crazy and you can kind of see here in the thing there's all these white spots around and you have to go in and color them up uh, so it gives a lot of like replay value and completionist stuff so you, you can you know you got to get all the paint stars and, and restore the the world in that aspect but you also have to go and color in all those spots and that unlocks like little collectibles and like artwork and soundtracks and and cool little just like mario completion and stuff like that um if you're looking for a good thing to uh, dust your wii u off with i definitely recommend the new paper mario I know uh, I gotta do that. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> I, like I'm telling you guys, it's it's really really good. Definitely gonna pick that one up. Uh, the next game I have is on the PS4, and it's also on the Xbox One, which I have both copies of because I liked it so much because it scared me. Yeah. And it, it scared my roommate Zach. If you're watching, I know it scared you as much as it scared me. Um, Filer, what's up? Hey, what up? Evil Within. It's kind of one of those messed up games. It's like a you are a third person, and you got to walk around this. I think it's like some asylum, trying to find your buddies for like this detective agency or whatever. And I think it's right from the get go. You're like stuck. You get like knocked out or something like that. And you go into the basement, and there's this big old like guy. He's like messed up in the face and like has chains and like blood all over him, just smashing someone's head in. And I'm like. <laughs> I was like, what kind of game is this? <laughs> so I'm like, do I kill him? Do I like destroy him or anything like that? So I just walk up behind him. He turns around and just kills me right there. No remorse. My head's on the floor. It was, uh, Yeah, it was a really brutal game. Um, oh, it kind of reminded me of like a, 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 a hardcore manhunt, if you could even believe yeah. that. Um, it's fun fact is the guys that did the original Resident Evils worked on this. Oh, really? Yeah, so Resident Evil 1, 2, I believe 3 as well. Uh, the developers that did that and the story writers and things like that made this game. See, yeah, and I liked it so much that I bought another copy on my Xbox One. Hey, scary games for Halloween. Oh, for this. This is pretty scary in itself. You gotta pick it up. 16 bucks, and I think it's on sale on Xbox Three, um, the Xbox One for like, I think 16 or 14 or something like that, as I saw. It. And it came with DLC. Nice. And I didn't get a chance to finish the DLC, but it's you gotta pick up the DLC if you're gonna do that. Oh, hey, Chris. <laughs> you have to pick it up. It's crazy. Yeah, I really 10 out of game. Um, I think it was 
not last week, but two weeks ago we talked about we had like almost a whole series of Resident Evil yeah. on GameCube. Uh, that brings me to my last one. This was a, a cool like side story that was a Wii exclusive actually. They did two in the series. Uh, we have Umbrella Chronicles here today, and then the second one was Dark Side Chronicles. This was a... Uh, I think Anthony has both of those. Yeah, really cool game. Um, they play like a rail shooter, so like House of the Dead oh. or, or things like that, where it moves you around and you have the cursor and you just like blast a bunch of stuff off the screen. Um, this had a lot of like uh, extras and hidden, kind of like House of the Dead, where like if you would shoot the cabinet or the car or whatever, you could get items, and if you did things the right way, you could explore different uh, pathways and unlock Walk different stuff. Yeah, Look at that phase right That's there. What I'm <laughs> Spooky. There you go, Sean. If you want a scary game, just look at that. <laughs> but this was really cool because it was canon Resident Evil story, and it, it, it cleaned up a lot of the, like, in-between games. Like, so between Resident Evil 1 and 0, between 1 and 2, like, different parts of 2, and, uh, you know, adds a lot of, like, background. Hey, there's Meat Hook. Look at him working hard, helping our, uh, our awesome customers. Um, but yeah, this was really, really cool. Really awesome game. Fun gameplay. Uh, it is local co-op. Uh, if you're a Resident Evil fan uh, and you have a Wii, definitely, definitely check this uh, series out. Gotta pick it up. Gotta pick it up. Gotta pick it up. I forget what game we talked about. Wasn't it, um... Dying Light. Dying Light. It was. It was the creators of Dying Light that made uh, Dead Island. Which was that was their first game. game, yeah. Yeah, this was their first game. And this is the, what is it, Definitive Collection, yeah. which comes with uh, Dead Island 1, the Riptide, and some arcade. Yeah. Retro yeah. Island, Retro Revenge. Yeah, that, I never played that one. And I didn't get a chance to actually play Riptide because whenever I wanted to, it was sold out. <laughs> I guess well, that was, uh, that was really crazy. I was working at GameStop in the Nittany Mall when that game came out. Um, and it was right around Halloween time, mm -hmm. and it was so underrated. Uh, but turned out to be a huge blockbuster. Yeah. That it was like this nightmare game to try to get a hold of. It was yeah. crazy. It was ridiculous. Nobody <laughs> expected it to be that good. And I mean, don't get me wrong. It was it was rough around the edges. It was definitely not polished. It was like a, a B or a C list title. Yeah. But just like the the cool, uh, you know, I, that was right when zombie hype really yeah, started like to Lester take off. Absolutely. Like and I picked it up, and I think I don't know. Chris played with us, but I know Dylan and like a couple of my other friends. We just played this nonstop. And my old lady and I played the whole. Actually, I think that might have been one of the first reasons that I got a second 360, just to so play. that we could play that game together. Yeah. It was. I th I would still pick it up and play it today. It was really cool. You could carry a bunch of like active weapons at once. Oh yeah. And um, you could throw anything, so any weapon could become a projectile. So I would have like my main like kick butt weapon that was like electrified or flaming sword or some flame, flame some sword. nonsense <laughs> like that um some marshall hey marshall <laughs> holding it down at lavelle keep it down <laughs> keep it down um but i would rock he'd carry like eight weapons so i'd have all these like knives and cleavers and stuff and i would just i had a lot of fun like running around and just like whipping knives and stuff at zombies one of my favorite was to like hit them in the face with it and then run up and pull my knife out before they fell back down <laughs> and then worse comes to worse like i could throw all of my weapons and then be left with just like my freaking awesome sword I had or whatever the, yeah i had a flame sword and i was like driving it i mean i yeah. was terrible chris, <laughs> chris can vouch for me i was god awful at driving but um I would just drive, and we would, I don't know how many times we would wreck, or the car would, like, break down or whatever, and I'm just like, alright, we're, we're messed, we're screwed, like, we're done, we're gonna die. I think couple said, speaking about the new demo, how about the new kiosk? Yeah, the, I saw Connor yeah. jumped on the, uh, the, the feed a little bit ago, man, yeah. we're, we're up and running in State College. It's a nice, beautiful kiosk. We got a ton yeah. of stuff up there. Uh, we're really making a great impression. Uh, you gotta check it out. Definitely, if you're check in the uh, you know in the central Pennsylvania area, pop into the Nitty Mall, see our boy Connor, and uh, check out our awesome kiosk and uh, yeah, servicing all your video mm -hmm. game needs in that area, at least through the holidays. Yeah, definitely. So, pretty good. Well, that about wraps us up. Yeah. For the uh, last one in October, I uh, hope everybody has a safe and happy Halloween. We're going to just, you know, take a walk around. Show you guys some stuff. How we doing? 
We got some uh, some good stuff popping in here. We got that copy of Bloody Roar floated in. Michael, there was that Symphony of the Night I was telling you. It's a green label, but still, get it. Monster Rancher 1 and 2, you don't see them very often. Float in Harvest on. Moon on PS2. We were talking about that a little earlier. Got some awesome Master System stuff, some Genesis. This is some fantastic 64s. Got the grape, the ice blue, the watermelon, Can and the jungle orange. orange. Missing the orange and the smoke, yep. Mm -hmm. Fire orange. Oh, we got that sweet little Zelda uh, treasure chest. That little, like, what is that? George Mask pen, yeah. Pen. yeah. And we got some wave birds in for that wireless GameCube plan. I can do 50 credit on these guys. Got a bunch of stuff. This will be like, I'll cover that. <laughs> Matty Ice, Fancy scene our here. fan, <laughs> Meat Hook, we got Top Loader, Weeb Hook, yeah, there you go. It might be Weeb. <laughs> weeb Hook. Got some fresh trades coming in the door, say what's up to Facebook. What is that? Man, that makes me miss those scary movie miss movies, whatever happened to that. <laughs> Micro Machine, I almost talked about that game today, I really, we rented that from far more all I the time. You know. Four. Dragon, Dragon Warrior 3 and 4 were really weird. You had to uh, mail order them. They didn't sell them in store, which is probably why they're uh, a little bit more expensive. Gremlins uh, too. Gremlins. <laughs> but, uh, you know, as Thanks for watching, Nick, Matty Ice. Be excellent to each other. Party on, dudes.